What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. In this video, we'll be discussing why this chart is actually the most important to the stock markets right now. We'll also be talking about our latest technical analysis for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, dollar index, Tesla, gold, and others. Really, the stock market comes down to one thing, basic human psychology. And when we understand that, we can understand a lot of things about what is going to happen next. Stay tuned. Well guys, it doesn't get much better than this, does it? When we come into the stock market and we again see green in the sectors that we've been targeting, technology, technology, semiconductors, hyper growth, all of those areas were up pretty heavily yesterday. And it just shows that when you're ahead of the curve, what types of things can occur? We've been talking about the FANG now for two weeks. All of a sudden, it's appearing in the mass media. We're talking about why it's appearing there now and why it's just about hit the take profit targets for our FANG trade. It's just amazing how these things happen time and time again. And I'm very glad that we were able to spot it as a community together on this channel. Let's now take a look at what happened in the sectors yesterday. So we saw the NASDAQ move. We saw, of course, Russell get a little bit better throughout the session. That's IWM. S&P 500 pushed by tech, and then the Dow Jones lagging behind. So that value sector play is now not the hottest thing in the market. Tech led in the sectors, and you'll notice XLY consumer discretionary was second up, then usually the one, two power punch combo whenever tech is leading, and energy was down 1.3%. So still not really a bit lackluster there for energy. So really, when we break down the markets right now, guys, you've got to be thinking outside the box. And one of the ways to think outside the box is where are the current put call ratios? Now, put call ratios, really, it's about how many people believe that the market is going to crash. And when everyone believes that the market is going to crash and they buy puts to hedge their portfolio, etc., the market has a tendency not to do so. Why is that? Because it's better if Wall Street and everybody else expire the contracts worthless. If we think about PCC here, and this is the put call ratio for the S&P 500, you'll notice just over here on the right hand side, put call ratio has been spiking up a little bit. And unless it gets back into the low 0.6s, that's our signal usually to say, okay, we need to be careful about what we're doing in the markets right now, because under or low 0.6s means that there's a huge amount of calls being opened and a lot less puts. Yesterday, you'll notice the ticker went actually down here as more people opened calls than puts for the session. So we're going to continue watching this on the channel. And if you enjoy this type of stuff, please make sure to subscribe as always. Yesterday, guys, let's get stuck into the technical analysis and break down everything. The dollar index to start off with, it hit our support. 92 has been reached. It pretty much came down here as smooth as it can. The lower highs, the lower lows, the lower highs, the lower lows on the smaller time frames were a thing of beauty. It was very technical and now it's hit 92. So if it breaks under 92, where does it go? 91.50 is the next level. If it bounces off here, then of course, we should be going back to 93.50, 93 at least. It all comes down to the dollar index, especially for things like gold, silver, and even some S&P 500 trades. This is a very important chart to be watching in 92 is the heavy support that we've been looking for for quite a few days now. Let's go over to BTC before we do gold. BTC, beautiful breakout, back above the 57,000 support. We know that the eight hour is the most important one. The eight hour closed above 57. You can see there was some resistance around the 57. It sold off, went all the way back down to 56, three, what, 50-ish area, and then moved on up back above. This is a great signal for Bitcoin bulls. Now we move towards, I believe, the 60,000. And especially when you take out this previous high over here, which is 59,138. If that can be taken out and we get through 60,000, I mean, you know what comes next, an explosive type of gain. I mean, this is like a massive amount of resistance across 60,000. Bitcoin has not done that for quite some time. And if you scroll it out to an eight hour like this, you can think of this coiling below the level. Will the previous high over here matter? I don't think so. I think it's going to be explosive towards the buy side. We did a bit of poll of the community. People had some crazy numbers they were coming up with. 400,000, 250,000. <laughs> I say, whoa, 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 get, get back to the reality right now. And the reality right now 
is going to be somewhere around 65 to 70 just based on basic human psychology and where Bitcoin likes to gravitate to. So if it breaks through 60,000, things are looking technically very strong. We've got that bullish engulf here on the eight hour. Remember eight hour, four hour daily, the charts to be looking at for cryptocurrencies right now, the easiest ones and the most likely to be correct statistically when you bring them on the charts and doing your analysis. Let's move over to gold and congratulations to gold bugs. Things are looking really great. I even like what it's doing right around this resistance here. So we're here on a two hour chart, but do you notice it's kind of like setting up a little flag just above or around the resistance? This is really cool because if it breaks, that means it's trying to get through. It's like coiling just before what we know is a resistance, which is 1760. Look, gold looks great. It, it really does. You look at the horizontal support resistance, you know 1760 is a key level. We've been talking about this now for quite a few days, the sleeping giant, I called it. And there's the support, there's the support, 1680. Now we have the resistance right around this 1760. Why do we have resistance here? Previous support, previous support. Very important to know this is a key level. It was even a key level back here in May of last year. But if it breaks through, what is in play? A double bottom pattern. You go to things like a daily, you break that down, you can see the 50 exponential, all these things, it just needs to get through. Weekly, you've got two above here, that's gonna be a little bit tough. Price action just looks so good. I mean, you've got the bullish hammer coming off the base, showing strong momentum. You've got the follow through this week, which hasn't closed yet, but of course only one more trading session left in it. And everything here is starting to point towards bullish movement. Now, why are we at a critical level? Because guess what, dollar index, 92, synergizing with gold at the 1760. So they're both exactly at the points of critical support resistance, which we talk about all the time. They all synergize together, guys, understand that. And that's why it's so important that we look for the dollar index break. Because if the dollar index breaks underneath 92, all of a sudden you're gonna see gold go above 1760 and it's all gonna start playing out. However, if the dollar index bounces off 92, Gold could be looking very different in the next 24 hours and shorting back off. Notice how it plays out. It's just a great thing to watch in the markets. Let's move over to Tesla. We'll do a quick brief one here. Good news for Tesla bulls. It bounced off the 20 exponential moving average, this red line here on the daily. It's bullish. It then got trapped by the 50. I don't like it when markets coil. This is kind of like US oil right now. If markets sit in this little range, that kind of always worries me. I mean, good if it bounces up and closes above, but I want this thing above 700 for you guys because that's gonna be the real sentiment breaker. Remember 700 was unable to hold through the Monday session and this week's been pretty lackluster for Tesla, but it did end up 1.91% yesterday. Watch the 20 exponential break or the 50 exponential break either way on the daily. This is going to be the thing that really elevates it up. And I would like to see a nice close above 700, ideally going into the weekend for Tesla. We'll move over to GME. Of course, there's all sorts of things going on here. We saw Ryan Cohen, I think, become the CEO or something of GME. Unfortunately, that news alone was not enough to pull this thing through. I've just got the same levels we've always had, 200 on the resistance, 173 on the support. It closed at 170 in terms of where the market actually ended up. But I was saying yesterday in the stream, this is my major concern, this series of lower highs. Look, you break through this, it's good. It's good because you break through this, you're breaking this kind of terrible looking decline that's going on here. But the volume is very low on this. And some people are saying, well, Tom, that's because everyone's got the diamond hands they're holding. No one is getting out. True, that could be it. But volume also dictates a lot of new people coming in and a lot of transacting and possibly also, remember, volume dictates squeezing. So the way I look at this is at this stage, it's coming down. It's not looking the best. I'm not sure. I mean, for me, under 173 is a very important daily close that has occurred but at least it's bounced a little bit off these previous little wicks, 160, 163-ish, that zone there. I am very, very interested in tomorrow's session on this one. If it continues to fall, obviously the 120 becomes the target. And if it can bounce back in, maybe it can get back through. But from most statistics, it does look a little bit short right now. Good luck, guys out there. 
Uh, yeah, that that is a bit of a decline though coming through in those series of lower highs. I want to see that broken against. I want to see 200 broken against to get the momentum going forward. Let's move on to the FANG now. The FANG has been incredibly strong. We've been talking about this now for a matter of a couple of weeks and it looks like the mass media has picked up on it as well. Everyone's now discussing the FANG, FANG this, FANG that. Every article is like, it's back. What are we doing? Are we getting into Apple? Are we getting into Amazon? Are we getting into Google? Unfortunately, that's usually when the things end. We have just reached the target of the inverse head and shoulders. That was much faster than I expected. We had one, two, three, four, five days of bullish pressure. The thing with the FANG is it doesn't usually hold more than six, like we talked about, six to seven bullish days in a row. So I would expect some decline to come through, possibly some profit taking on Friday after such an amazing move through this week. I mean, it's just been a green week and there was so much profits to be made in the FANG stocks. I'm hoping some of you did well out there. If you didn't, don't worry. There's always another opportunity. But the FANG has, at this stage, it looked like, kind of completed look it will move towards 5000 if the nasdaq situation continues but uh do remember there is always a chance now it pulls back back into this zone what is this it's the four seven zone so maybe 100 points backwards when profit taking does occur let's move over to the nasdaq so the nasdaq hasn't completed yet you'll see our lines here this is the exact same setup as the fang we've got the inverse head and shoulders you've got the breakout occur here and then you've got, of course, the movement on. So now we're at a point where we're at 13,845, just approaching previous resistance. I kind of expect to touch that, maybe a little bit of a pullback, and then maybe a further movement on to our eventual 14,400 kind of level. This is the level that all of these technicals are predicting. And so far, we're, we're doing quite well on our way towards getting there. Stay tuned for more information about that one. The S&P 500 is the chart I'll be looking for to see when we kind of top out. And this is all about the community trend line. Remember, this trend line has been pretty consistent for us throughout these bull runs. I'm going to keep having it on the chart until something tells me otherwise. 4,097. Actually, the future's trading now at the time of this recording. 4,107. So even higher. It's <laughs> phenomenal how this thing's moving. Uh, but yeah, we keep going up. Let's say we move up through this. Whenever we hit this trend line, we're going to need to dial in on the smaller time frames, have a look at what's happening in the markets, and then, of course, decide whether we've hit correct amounts to take profit from a trade perspective. And yeah, I, I, look, I think this thing will pull back to the daily 20 relatively soon. I mean, these put call ratios dropped yesterday. If they keep dropping, that could be the signal that really pushes this back into the 20 and then it bounces up, etc. But watch the trend line, guys. This will be probably one of the more important levels. And of course, join us live if you want to find out more about these types of things. We're we'll going live one and a half hours early before the New York stock market opens tonight, talking about crypto, talking about stocks, talking about commodities and anything else. It's been an amazing community participation so far. I love what we're doing. And it's just so much fun. Remember, click on the Discord links down below as well. Get into the Discord. Let's get that up to 3,000. We're approaching it quickly. And uh, yeah, the bigger the community grows, the more trades and investments can be found and shared with everybody. Bye for now.